This is John Whitaker for the Mathematical Analysis 1 class, and this is our 20th video lecture. And we left off um, in the middle of a theorem that had two parts to it, uh, part A and part B. Part B had several uh, subparts, and we had proven part A, but I'm going to start today by listing the theorem and then going on and proving part B and its main parts. So the theorem said, part A, suppose x sub n is a sequence in Euclidean space Rk, and um, that x sub n bar as a term of the sequence is equal to a sub 1 comma n, comma a sub 2 comma n, uh, and then a sub k comma n for every n element of the natural numbers, then this sequence x sub n bars converges to x bar, which is equal to um, alpha sub 1, alpha sub 2, all the way up to alpha sub k. If and only if the limit as n goes to infinity of the alpha uh, sub j comma n equals to alpha sub j. Part B was suppose we have a sequence x of n and y sub n bar are sequences in R sub k and B sub n. A sequence, it's a sequence in R, okay. and we're going to also assume that X of N converges to X bar and Y sub N's converge to Y bar. And the B sub n's converge to B in R, uh, then uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of x sub n bar plus y sub n bar will converge or will equal to x bar plus y bar. Uh, that's the first thing. Two, um, the limit as n goes to infinity. Uh, x of n bar times y of n bar, uh, that will converge to x bar times y bar. Uh, this is this dot product or inner product between x bar and y bar. Uh, and then finally, part three is that the limit as n goes to infinity of v sub n times x of n bar, that'll converge to v times uh, x bar. Okay, so uh, part A, we did the proof last time. Okay. For part B, We'll start off assuming the hypothesis will let uh, x bar sub n, y bar sub n, uh, be sequences in
These guys will be sequences in, R sub K. Such that the limit as n goes to infinity of x sub n bar equals to x bar and the limit as n goes to infinity y sub n bar equals to y bar. Whoops. And let um, d sub n be a sequence. In R such that B sub N converges to B. Okay. So for part one, we want to show that the limit as N goes to infinity of X sub N bar plus Y sub N bar uh, equals to x bar plus y bar okay now um, we're going to use part a to do this so here I'm going to say uh, let um, x sub n be equal to let's say uh, alpha sub uh, 1 n, alpha sub 2 n, all the way up to alpha sub k n. So that's its symbol for x sub n. Let y sub n bar, n bar be equal to, let's say, gamma sub 1 n, um, gamma sub 2 coming in, all the way up to gamma sub k coming in. Those are the representations. Uh, okay. Now, here's what I can say. Uh, so, since x sub n converges to x, then that says that alpha sub j comma n is a sequence converges to alpha sub j, and that's for all j elements of 1 up to k. And that's by part A. Where uh, x bar equals to alpha sub 1, alpha sub 2, all the way up to alpha sub k. Similarly, we can say things about the y's of n's, components of the y's of n's. Uh, namely, similarly, of n's converge to y, then um, the gamma uh, sub uh, jn okay, converge to gamma sub j, that's for all j element of 1, 2, up to k, where y bar is going to be equal to uh, gamma sub 1, gamma sub 2, up to gamma sub k. And this is by part A. And 
does, by a previous theorem, about complex numbers, this one that we did uh, in chapter three, it says, uh, if you take two sequence of complex numbers, each one of them converging, then um, uh, the limit of the addition of that sequence will converge to the limit, the addition of the limits. Uh, and here, we're, we're talking about real numbers, but remember, the complex numbers includes the real numbers. And so what's said about complex numbers also works for real numbers. n must infinity of alpha sub j comma n plus gamma sub j comma n will converge to alpha sub j plus gamma sub j. Okay. And that's true for every j element of 1, 2, all the way up to k, just for each component. And thus, by part a, Since the components converge like that, what that means that we have is that the limit as n goes to infinity of x sub n plus y sub n bars will be equal to x bar plus y bar. Where we view x sub n bar plus y sub n bar as nothing more than alpha uh, sub 1 comma n plus gamma sub 1 comma n comma um, alpha sub 2 comma n plus gamma uh, sub 2 comma n all the way up to it would be the last one would be alpha sub k comma n plus gamma sub k comma n and x bar plus y bar is going to be equal to alpha sub 1 plus gamma sub 1 alpha sub 2 plus gamma sub 2 all the way up to the last component which is alpha sub k plus gamma sub k so that proves part a one of uh, part B. Now for part two, we want to prove that the limit as n goes to infinity of x sub n times y sub n is equal to x bar times y bar. So again, uh, we have that the limit as n goes to infinity of the alpha sub j comma n, that will converge to alpha sub j, and the limit as n goes to infinity of the gamma sub j comma n, that will equal to uh, gamma sub j, this is by part A. So both of those uh, conclusions are part, part A, and the fact that x sub n's converge to x, and y sub n's converge to y. Okay. Um, 
So by a previous theorem, the one about complex numbers at several parts, uh, for tickets are complex uh, numbers. So by previous theorem, um, then the limit is n goes to infinity of alpha sub j k times gamma sub j k uh, equals to alpha sub j uh, times gamma sub j. So this has to do with product, product of uh, uh, convergent sequences. Uh, and thus, uh, by a previous theorem, we have that the sum as j runs from 1 to k of alpha sub j k uh, times gamma sub j k this should be n here and uh, above these should have been n there needs to be n's here These should have been ends. So this will converge to uh, the sum as j runs from 1 uh, to k of alpha sub j gamma sub j. And that has to do with sums of convergent sequences. And that is the dot product, if you will, of the inner product. So um, that says that x bar times y bar each sub n converges to x bar times y bar, giving you the inner product. Remember, the inner product between X, by, X bar and Y bar is nothing more than the components, each uh, similar uh, components multiplied together in the sum of all of those multiplications, which is what we have here. Okay, so that was part uh, two. So part three, I'm starting. And here, we want to show that the limit is n goes to infinity of v sub n times x bar sub n equals to okay, v times x bar. That's what we want to show. Okay, and so um, as a comments, where we think uh, v sub n x bar sub n has scalar multiplication. In our head, uh, note B sub n times uh, X sub n uh, is equal to 
Well, it should be uh, V sub n times, here this will be alpha sub 1n, comma, so that's the first coordinate, V sub n times alpha uh, 2 coming in, all the way up to V sub n alpha sub k comma n. Since x of n converges to x then by part a, we have uh, alpha sub j come in converges to alpha sub j by part a. Of this theorem. Thus, V sub n alpha sub j comma n converges to V alpha sub j, and that's true for all j element from 1, 2, up to k. That's about previous theorem, and so what we have then is each one of these terms up here converges to uh, V alpha uh, sub j. And so that gives us that V sub n, x sub n bar will converge to V x bar, where this is, uh, this is by part A, okay, where V x bar is equal to V alpha sub 1, V alpha sub 2, all the way up to V alpha sub k. And that does it. Okay. Next thing we want to talk about is <clears throat> subsequences. So we have a definition. Here it says. It says given a sequence. Piece of n. Consider a sequence of positive integers uh, such that, so here's my uh, sequence of positive It's the n sub 1, and it's going to be less than n sub 2 which is less than n sub 3, which is less than, we continue this pattern forever. <clears throat> so n sub 1, n sub 2, n sub 3, forever, is my sequence of positive integers, and they satisfy that they're increasing in this fashion. Then the sequence p sub n i, as i runs from 1 to infinity, is called a subsequence. A piece of n. If piece of n i converges, its limit is called a subsequential limit of Pn. I just write that right here. Of Pn. We'll look at some examples.
So consider the sequence. One over n. That it's a subsequence of n n r. It's a sequence, not subsequence. Sequence in r. Uh, then if we look at those terms. Well, the first term is one, and we have one half, and one third, and one fourth, and so forth forever. Okay, now, here's my first example. One half, one fourth, one sixth, one eighth, and so forth, uh, which equals to one over two n, as n runs from one to infinity, to the pi, is a subsequence of one over n. So what's happening here is I have one over n that produces these numbers in this order, and what I'm looking at is pulling the second term of this sequence. So here, this is really uh, x, if you will, x of n sub uh, 1, which would be equal to 1 over uh, 2i, okay, or 2 times 1. It's the second term from this sequence. Here's the fourth term from this sequence. Okay. <clears throat> It's the second term in this sequence, but it comes from the fourth term. In this sequence. What we're doing is that every uh, term in this subsequence is a term in the original sequence, and it maintains the order um, of the original sequence. That is, one half that comes before one fourth, one fourth one come before one sixth, and so forth. Here's a second example: one half, two thirds, three fourths. Uh, four um, uh, six or four fifths, I should say, five six, and so forth, is not a subsequence of one over n. Okay, not. And the reason it's not is two thirds is not a, a an element. Are not a term in the original sequence. Okay. So not everything in here is in the original. Let's look at one more example. So we're still working under this uh, main sequence, one over n. So our third example is one half, one eighth, one four, one sixth, one fourteenth, one tenth, one twelfth is not, and so A subsequence of one over n. Okay. Now, all the terms in this sequence okay, uh, are terms of one over n, but these terms do not maintain the ordering established by the sequence one over n. Uh, in particular, uh, one a does not become does not come before one fourth in this sequence. And so uh, that ordering is not maintained, and so that's a problem. So here, let me write this down in terms of things to remember for subsequences. Subsequences must have terms from the original sequence And must maintain the order. Okay. 
I'd like to now consider another example. So let's look at the sequence minus 1 raised to n. Uh, as n runs from 1 to infinity, which equals to minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, and so forth. That's the sequence in order. Then, uh, the sequence 1 to the n, as n runs from 1 to infinity, which is always 1, is, well, it is a subsequence of the original sequence. is a subsequence of minus 1 to the n. that is minus 1, the exam runs from 1 to infinity. So all of the terms are minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. When n is 3, we still have minus 1, minus 1, forever, is a subsequence that converts to minus 1. So, from our definition of subsequence, part of that, uh, 1 and minus 1 are subsequential, subsequential limits of the sequence minus 1 to the n. One thing I want you to know is that the sequence minus 1 to the n, uh, it diverges. There isn't a single uh, real number there. After some point, all of those terms are arbitrarily close to it. Okay, let's look at a, a fact. subsequence of Pn then what we're going to compare is the subindices then n sub i will be uh, greater than or equal to i, and this is true for all uh, i element of j. So here, whatever this number is, it's going to be uh, bigger than this number. Uh, just to illustrate this before we do the proof, which will be done by induction, as our example to keep in mind, if we let we look at 1 over n, n run from 1 to infinity, <clears throat> that's going to be equal to uh, 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 
1 over 5, 1 over 6, 1 over 7, 1 over 8, and so forth forever. And here, if somebody, this would be called, if you will, x of 1, x of 2, x of 3, x of 4, x of 5, x of 6, x of 7, x of 8. I'll stop there. If we look at one of the subsequences that we just talked about, and I'll write down 1 over 2i. Okay, i runs from 1 uh, to infinity. What well, that's equal to, <clears throat> that's going to be equal to uh, 1 half, 1 four, uh, 1 sixth, 1 eighth, 1 tenth, 1 twelfth, 1 fourteenth, 1 sixteenth, and I'll stop there. And here's what I'm going to tell you. In terms of, uh, of this sequence, uh, if you want, this is the first term. Okay? And it's called x of n sub 1, if you will. Okay? And where it falls, what n sub 1 is, x of n sub 1 is really the same thing as x sub 2. So n sub 1 equals to 2. Notice that uh, the 2, which is what n sub 1 is, is bigger than the index 1. Okay? That's what it's saying here. And let me write this up here. This is the second term. This is x sub n sub 2. But what's it equal to? It's equal to x sub 4. So here, what we have from this setting is that n sub 2, which is 4, is bigger than 2. Bigger than or equal to. Okay? <clears throat> and that maintains what's being said here. The index, which is 2, is not as big. It's less than or equal to. Uh, the the subindex, which is 2, is less than or equal to equal to the index, uh, which in here, in this case, is 4. Okay. N sub 2 is equal to 4. Okay, that's what this is saying. Let's do the proof of the fact. And it's by induction on I. So here, for i equal 1, what we notice is that n sub uh, 1 is, uh, remember, a positive integer. Okay? So that's greater than or equal to 1, okay? since the smallest positive integer is 1. And so the statement is true that this is i, this is n sub i. So n sub i is greater than or equal to i, which is what we want to show, uh, when i is equal to 1. Now, suppose the statement is true for uh, i equal to k, that is, n sub k is bigger than or equal to k. We want to show that n sub k plus 1 is bigger than or equal to k plus 1. Okay. Well, since uh, p sub n sub i is a subsequence of the piece of ends. Uh, then what we have is 
ints of 1 is less than ints of 2 is less than ints of 3, and so forth. Okay? So, what that says is that uh, n sub k is going to be less than n sub k plus 1. Uh, so, we have, extending this just a little bit, we have k is less than or equal to n sub k, which is less than n sub k plus 1. So, uh, that means, uh, well, I'll say it this way. Since n sub k and n sub k plus 1 are both counting numbers, with n sub k being less than n sub k plus 1, we have that n sub k plus 1 is less than or equal to n sub n sub quantity k plus 1. We're almost done. So that means, because k was less than n sub k, less than or equal to, so that means that k plus 1, which is going to be less than or equal to n sub k plus 1, is going to be less than n sub k plus 1. Less than or equal to. And therefore we have the fact. Therefore, k plus 1 is less than or equal to n of the quantity k plus 1. And that proves it. Okay. I'd like to take a moment to make a uh, comment and uh, <clears throat> to comment. And so in terms of subsequences, the first comment that I want to make is that if some statement is true uh, for each pn, then this statement is true for each p sub n sub i, where P sub n sub i is a subsequence of P sub n. And a lot of the qualities that a sequence will have, the subsequence will inherit. And then just as a second comment, something that might be useful now and again. Is that every sequence Is a subsequence of itself. Okay. Well, I want to write up a theorem, and um, we might, it's got two parts, and we might be able to prove the first part. So here's part A. If piece of N. 
is a sequence in a compact set, compact, I'm sorry, metric space. X, so X itself, the big space is compact. Then some subsequence of P sub N. Uh, convergence to a point of X. In part B of this theorem, What it says is that every bounded um, sequence in RK contains a convergent subsequence. So here's proof. We're going to do uh, part A first. So um, we're going to let E be the range of the P sub n's, the sequence. So these are vector values, P sub n's. We're looking at them there, E. Okay. If E is finite. Okay. Then uh, there is a P that's in E and a sequence in sub I. Such that n sub 1 is less than n sub 2 is less than n sub 3, and so forth, forever. Such that P sub n sub 1 is equal to P sub n sub 2, which equals to P sub n sub 3, which equals, and it goes on forever, which equals to this P. Look, if the range is finite, you know, for P sub 1, uh, for P sub 1, you get an answer. P sub 2, you get an answer. P sub 3, you get an answer. But there's only finitely many answers. That means that one of the answers is repeated infinitely many times. That, that we're going to call P. And we just write down P sub n sub 1, P sub n sub 2, P sub, uh, each one of those terms uh, are going to be P. We're picking uh, <clears throat> the terms that were P in our original sequence, okay? Okay. Uh, so the subsequence P sub n sub i. will converge to P. Okay, look, I had hinted at this, that a constant sequence converges to itself. I said that we've had some facts that imply that, but let me show you how you can do it with the definition. So the proof that a constant sequence converges is if you let epsilon be greater than zero be given, um, then
we need, this is from the definition, an n element of j such that for all, uh, in this proof, we'll say for all i uh, greater than or equal to the n, the distance between p sub n sub i and p will be less than epsilon. Uh, we'll note that <clears throat> the distance between p sub n sub i and p is equal to the distance between p and p, because the p sub n sub i are all p, and that's zero, which is less than epsilon. So if we let <clears throat> n equal to big n equal to one, then for all n, I'm sorry, for all i bigger than or equal to n, we have that the distance between p sub n sub i and p will be less than epsilon. So what that says, So what that says uh, is that the piece of n sub i is converged to p. Okay. Right. This is a comment. This is the proof that this is a proof that uh, a constant sequence converges. Converges to that constant. Okay. Now, uh, so we were working on this uh, statement for part A, and we've got E being the output values, and we've said, well, what if E was finite? Uh, we have an answer here, we have a subsequence that converges. But what if E is infinite? So that's kind of case two, I can go ahead and break it down. If E is infinite, okay, uh, then since X is compact, E has a limit point. In X, say uh, P. Okay. So by a previous theorem, there exists a, a sequence any. that will converge to P this sequence since it comes from me, which is a subsequence of P sub n can be made of this sequence. And that proves part A. And that's what we'll start with today. We'll start up next time by finishing uh, this theorem by doing part D.